So the NFT market is heating up right now. All the prices of the top tier projects are starting to slowly increase. So I'm gonna share with you some of the best projects that I've seen that have a really high potential to grow during the next bull market. So you wanna make sure you watch this video to see if these opportunities are for you. So the first project that we have is gonna be the Bored Ape Kennel Club. And basically it's like these dogs that are related to the Bored Ape Yacht Club, which is one of the hottest projects right now in crypto. So you might have seen this in some music videos with Post Malone and you see all these celebrities buying this. And the floor right now is gonna be like 59 ETH for one of these. So the second tier of this is gonna be the Mutant Ape Yacht Club, which just pumped from four ETH to almost 11 ETH in the last month. I believe what's gonna be next is gonna be the Board Kennel Club, which is the third tier, which are these dogs. You know, who really got me thinking about this is actually a fellow Cyber Kong named uh, Nate Rivers. So originally what he said a month ago was that he thought that four Mutant Apes would be the price of one Board Ape. Three or four Board Kennel Club is gonna be one Mutant Ape. So far that's actually looking kind of true if you do the math. So right now, one of these is gonna be 4.3 ETH. Mutin is gonna be 11, so it's gonna be like two and a half of the dogs equals one of these. If you multiply six of these equals one of these. So they, I mean, it's not perfect, but then there's like a multiple on there. Here's a hypothesis. Board Ape Yacht Club, if you really think about the volume that they have, it's ridiculous. So if you look at the charts, and I'm using Nonsense right now, Mutin Ape has a crazy volume compared to everything right now. It's, it's pumping like crazy. Board Ape also has a lot of volume. Kennel Club is gonna be the third tier, and that's also gonna get volume as well because there's gonna be a correlation to those projects. So why would people invest into this dog specifically? Well, it's because it's just attached to one of the biggest projects. The first project goes off, the second tier is going to go off, and the third tier is going to go off. And then as a collective, all these three projects kind of go up together. If you know Board Yacht Club, they have one of the strongest communities in the NFT space. And a lot of people buy this specific project because of the clout. It's kind of like the modern day Lamborghini or the modern day like Rolex, for example. And so the people that can't afford the mutants or they can't afford the original ones, they're going to buy the dog because right now it's only uh, for ETH. And just like a couple days ago, it was three. So, you know, the price is obviously climbing really high. And just because of the association and the commercial success of the Board at Yacht Club project, I personally feel that this is probably a good entry point into this. And, and most likely this project is gonna take off on the next coming months, especially during the next bull market. All right, so the next call that I have is gonna be Chromie Squiggles by Snowfro. And actually just a couple days ago, this was like four or five ETH. Now it's seven, it's probably gonna keep going up. And the chromie squiggles are essentially these little squiggly lines. And this is fine art, apparently. So basically, if you go into it, like what is it exactly? It kind of moves. And so it's just like a line like with a rainbow. So you might be thinking, why would this be valuable? Basically, there's a company called Artblocks. It's a platform that puts out these generative art projects, meaning that the creator or artist creates an algorithm that kind of spits out an infinite amount of art. And so basically you create an algorithm and say, okay, you draw a line and they're gonna have different colors, different rainbows, and then let's let the computer do all the work and generate all this art. So Artblocks is the biggest art platform for NFTs right now. And this was the first NFT that they put out, which is the Chromie Skill Why I believe this is undervalued, especially when it was at 4 ETH, that was like an easy buy, is because of the cultural significance. When Artblocks came out and they said, okay, like this is generative art, this is gonna be a thing. So many other projects basically jumped on that bandwagon and were like, oh, I'm an artist. Let me do generative art too. And now everybody's doing generative art. One year later, or like five or 10 years later, when people look back on like, what was the significant piece of art that changed the game for artists and NFTs, they're gonna look at this project because it was the first on Artblocks, which is known to be the first platform for art NFTs. This piece of art doesn't have to have any utility. It doesn't have to have a token. It doesn't need to give you anything extra. It just exists as art. And it's very difficult for art to do that in the NFT space. People will always look at it as the first. And I can see like 10 years from now, these squiggly lines are gonna be in museums, like in the MoMA and stuff like that, because it's gonna have such a cultural significance. So if you look at CryptoPunks, what they did was they did the first generative art project or one of the first. And so you have all these other projects like Cool Cats, Board at Yacht Club, CyberCon, they all took inspiration from CryptoPunks to do that uh, picture profile project. The reason why CryptoPunks are so expensive right now is because they were the first, right? They don't have to give you anything. They don't have to offer you a token. They don't have to do anything. They are just valuable because they're the first and it's a flex. Art block, Chromie Squiggles, same exact thing, except instead of picture profile, it's for the art world. Even at 7 ETH, it's undervalued. And I believe this is gonna go up. And not only that, you also gotta look at who are the people buying this? Like there's a lot of investors, like top tier investors, like Kevin Rose, for example, that are own some of these and are really big fans of it. If you really study like art history, this is guy, I actually read this book called uh, Duveen, the story of the most spectacular art dealer of all time. Reading that book, it really taught me about like how art is valued, meaning that this guy would go out and buy art in Europe and he'll sell it in America 
And then there were like all these different tactics that he would do to inflate prices, buy his own art, increase the price, get certain people to buy it, almost like influencer marketing, but like back then, like it create value in art, even though there's no real utility value to it. And I feel like for Chromie Screwgirls, it has a lot of that, where a lot of investors, a lot of people who are influential in the crypto space own one of these. So they are going to actively protect their investment. They're gonna actively increase the floor price of these things so that they make more money when they wanna sell it in the future. And so you have two things. One is the cultural signal. Significance. Number two, uh, you got all these people who are backing it and will openly and publicly promote this project by just buying in early or not early, but like buying in at a cheap price. Other people are doing all the hard work to increase the value of your assets and then you can sell it whenever you want. Or if you're an art connoisseur, you can uh, just keep it. Now, the next project we're gonna talk about is gonna be Kaiju Kings. Now for Kaiju Kings, I actually own one and I bought it around when it came out. I didn't mint it, but I bought it on the secondary market. So Kaiju Kings, if you don't know what they are, it's kind of like a picture profile project, more like anime, Japanese, and inspired themes. There's like a token to it. They can make babies and things like that. So if you want to go to the website and learn more. For me, what really stood out is it's very similar to Cyber Kongs, which I'm a big fan of, except like for these guys, they really went hard on art and they actually made it like quite unique. And uh, when it came out, it was like one of the coolest projects to come out. If you look at the price on OpenSea right now, the floor price is going to be 0.948, which is for the babies. I wouldn't recommend buying the babies because they don't produce tokens and they're not that valuable. I would actually recommend if you were to look at this project, only getting the Genesis one and you want to make sure you you just filter by go to origin and click on Genesis and you see these. For the Genesis at least, it's gonna be almost three ETH. Literally like two days ago, it was like 1.8 ETH for the floor. So the floor is increasing really fast. When it came out, it was super hot. The price was like four or five ETH and then it dropped down to like 1.8 and then everyone was thinking like, oh, okay, like are they dying or what's going on? What I think makes it so valuable is the community. When you buy an NFT, everybody has a community. Everybody has a Discord group, a bad community. All they care about is like, oh, what's the floor price? Somebody needs to pump my bags. I need to sell this. Like, oh, let's get this influencer to talk about it. I feel like the good projects, what they do is they just build. They don't really care about what the floor price is per se, but they just care about building the highest quality community and supporting each other however they can, right? And so for Kaiju Kings, they got like an alpha group where they help each other share information. I know like sometimes when I have questions on NFTs, uh, what's a good buy or any questions like Kaiju King, like if I write a question, somebody will always respond. And that's not very common in a lot of projects. And they'll give you a good answer too, not like a BS answer. And the other thing that really stood out to me was that in that community, I see certain people who have Kaiju Kings branch out and they create their own NFT project and they get so much support from the Kaiju King community. So I look at a project like its value based on how successful that project can make other people successful. So it's not about, oh, how rich can I get from selling an NFT? It's how can I help other people also become successful? And hopefully that person shares the same philosophies, share the same culture, and they also you know, help other people become successful and it continues on and on and on. And so I've seen other projects, like for example, I talked about NanoPass in a previous video. I can see that a lot of the people who are in the team of NanoPass, they're really active in the Kaiju King community. And the Kaiju Kings really supported them from the beginning. And now when they put out a project, it sells out, the demand is really high and the price is looking really good. And it's very rare to find a community that can help other people become successful. Not a lot of projects can do this, you know, there's only a handful. And so that's why I feel like it's a little underrated at three ETH. When it was at like under two ETH, that's like an easy buy. But now obviously the price is going up. So you have to determine on uh, when your entry price is, when your exit price is, or if you want to be a part of that community and build on that community, you know, it's really up to you. And before you make any purchasing decision, know that this is not financial advice. Always do your own research, but I'll say this. When you see this recording, it may come out a couple days later, the prices may change. And so you really need to pay attention to what price you're buying these assets at. I mean, what price you're going to exit at. If these prices are way pumped by the time you see this video, just know that it becomes riskier as the price gets higher. If you're buying it at the bottom, the risk to reward reward ratio is much better, meaning that it probably won't go lower than that. And it has a real chance to like double or tripling or even 4Xing from there in a short period of time. But if you're buying at a high price, you're buying at a peak, risk to reward ratio is not gonna be that good. So always, 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 always pay attention to the floor prices over time. Like for example, if you're going to like Kaiju Kings, essentially in the beginning, the price is really high and then it dropped a lot. And so around this time, that's the time to buy when it's like 1.8 ETH. And so now the prices are starting to go up and as you wait and you delay, it becomes more riskier. So same thing with Chromie Squiggles where like if you look at the prices, if you look at all time, the prices were cheap in the beginning, you know, nobody cared about generative art and then boom, there was like this huge surge of people buying it. And then I don't know what the heck's going on over here, but, but then the prices were pretty high. I think it was like 15 ETH for the floor and then the prices drop. You wanna look at good projects, people find value in that have strong fundamentals, see when the price drops to like a bottom floor price and you can't always time it perfectly 
quickly, but you want to get the floor and then buy it at those times. And then when it goes up, you can either sell it or keep it, whatever. These markets, unpredictable. It can go up, it can go down. Just make sure you buy at the right time and you know when you're going to exit. That's it for this video. I'll see you guys in the next.